Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. This is Jake. And this is going to be our Bonske preview for the upcoming Aki Basho. Uh, once again, these are coming out a little bit later than we used to, as I'm wanting to hold my cards a little bit closer to the vest uh, and not uh, give out any free advice to anybody playing the Guess the Bonske game. So uh, this episode is going to be released probably on Tuesday, August 22nd. We're recording oh, oh, Don't it. hold me to that. <laughs> it better we're recording well in advance of that date that, uh, that is not what i said though <laughs> it's not uh, a true factor <laughs> no just uh, but, just to rub it in we are recording this when we usually do yeah but... <laughs> uh and so we should have the answers for this bonds k as you're listening to this in just about a week and we will have the uh review for this bonds k in just about a week. Uh, so we'll go ahead and dive right into our predictions. Uh, hey, real quick, that, you want to go over real quick what we got over there on the other side of the screen? Absolutely. So if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, feel free to subscribe, uh, like the video, leave a comment. Just because we're on uh, YouTube doesn't mean you have to say that crap. It. I mean, if we if we want more traction, it, it helps, it, I'm sure. A, we don't have to be that nudge, YouTuber. <laughs> a gentle reminder, a gentle <laughs> nudge in the right direction certainly couldn't hurt. If we want to be good content creators, Jake, it's what you got to do. You got to uh, smash but, that subscribe button. I know. I, I Yeah, it just hurts to hear it coming from, you know, someone I thought I, I trusted. Somebody you might have respected at one point in your life. At one point when we first yeah. met, maybe. <laughs> uh, but no, what we've got going on on YouTube, uh, we've got uh, a Bods case showing the results from the previous Basho, just a quick visual guide for anybody watching along. And then as we reveal my predictions, we're going to be showing uh, to the right of that my predicted Bonds K for Aki. So we've got the Nagoya results and right next to it, we'll have my prediction for Aki. Just a little bit uh, better visual way of keeping track of my prediction as opposed to just listening to me ramble and try to remember who was where. Yeah, and the other end of the spectrum, just putting the whole thing up there was kind of boring as well. Um, so like this way, when we start out with the obvious, we'll be able to just go, ta-da, Yokozuna East. That's Terra no Fuji. And, and as we go this... along, we'll reveal them and talk about them as they go. Yep. Uh, and so, Jake, you could also click the Yokozuna West button as we will not Ooh, have. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Vacant. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we will move down to the Ozeki rank where our top rank Ozeki will be Kiri Shima. Uh, despite him having a losing record and being Kadoban for the upcoming Aki Basho, he will be the top ranked Ozeki uh, because six wins is better than the zero wins that Takakesho got. Uh, so Kirishima will be the top ranked Ozeki. He'll be the number two guy on this Bonds K, and he needs eight wins to keep his Ozeki rank this upcoming Basho. At Ozeki West, we will have Takakesho who for the first time since May of last year will not be the second highest man on the Bonske uh, as he was absent for the entirety of this Basho. Kirishima passes him. He will slide over to the Ozeki West rank, and he will also need eight wins to keep his Ozeki rank in the Aki Basho. But That's, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's wild to me that we've been in this era of just Terano Fuji and Takakesho at the champion ranks for that long. I mean, it hasn't been just them. There were a couple of Basho in there with Mitaki Yumi, and then like there might have been guess, like yeah, one right. more with Mitaki Yumi, and then two with Shodai. And Takakesho is just ahead of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, but he's been time. he's been number two for a year and a half now, basically. Yep, that's yep. wild. Cool. And probably it was just a blip on the radar that he wasn't number two May of last year. Sure, <laughs> he probably I'm, I'm was guessing... for like the three or four Basho before that too. Probably going back to when Terano Fuji passed him and caught up to Hakuho, you know, yeah. <laughs> probably. Yep. 
Uh, and as we all know, after his U show winning performance in the previous Basho, we will have a newly promoted Ozeki, and that will be Hoshoryu, and he will be ranked at Ozeki 2 West, not on the east side, as he needs to be uh, on the west side to kind of keep the balance of there not being a Yokozuna West. Uh, we're going to place the extra Ozeki on the west side to keep the balance of the Bonds K. And even though he had a better record than Kirishima and Takakesho in the previous Basho, uh, due to him being a newly promoted Ozeki, he will always be the lowest ranked Ozeki. That's funny that there's three guys ahead of him and he has more wins than all of them combined. In the Very last easily so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, they have seven total. He had 12. Uh, yeah. 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 Injuries are a son of a bitch. They are. It just yeah. was kind of funny to me. Yeah. Uh, moving down to the Seki Wake rank, we will have Daesho and Wakamoto Haru. Both of them had disappointing Bashos in the previous Basho in so much as they did not get the double digit uh, wins to kind of continue their strong Ozeki push, but they're still rising up the ranking slightly as Daesho is going to move from Sekiwake West to Sekiwake East, and Wakamoto Haru will move up from Sekiwake 2 West to Sekiwake 1 West. But we're going to keep the trend of having more than two Sekiwake going as Koto Nowaka had 11 wins from the Komosubi rank, which is the magic number to force open a new Sekiwake rank. So this is going to be our seventh consecutive Basho that there have been three or more Sekiwake. And this <laughs> is a streak that is only surpassed in the mo modern era by a stretch of eight Basho from 1992 to 1993. That's hilarious. Yep. Yeah, it does feel like we talk about pretty much every time that we get to a Bonske like this. It's like, it's been a while, hasn't it? Are we still doing that? Yep, we're still doing that. We're still doing that. All right. Yep. <laughs> uh, at the Como Subi rank, we had Koto Nawaka being promoted to Sekiwake. That'll open up one Como Subi spot. And then we had Abi, who was the other Komosubi in the last Basho. He had a 6-9 and nine record. He will be demoted out of the Sanyaku ranks. So we are going to have two new uh, Komosubi slots for the Aki Basho. Uh, Nishikigi, the soon-to-be 33-year-old Nishikigi, will be making his Sanyaku debut. He'll what be claiming fossil. that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's younger than me, but my God, is that man ancient. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, with his 10 and five record from the top Maiga Shira spot, he is guaranteed to be Komosubi. Uh, and once again, making his San Yaku debut at 33 years old. I need to find a Not good right. way to do research to see if where that ranks in like oldest people making their San Yaku. Yeah, debut. yeah. How old? Not like who's the oldest person to be that rank, but who's the oldest to get there for the first time? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's got to be up there on that list. I have to assume. Got to be. Uh, and then Toby Zaru is going to be claiming the next open Komosubi slot. He had a nine and six record for Maigashira one. Uh, this should be Toby Zaru's third trip to the rank of Komosubi in the past year. Uh, there are no other threats really to take either of these Komosubi ranks. By the math, Hokuto Fuji deserves to be ranked Komosubi, but Nishikigi and Toby Zaru deserves to be ranked higher than Hokuto Fuji and Amigashira 9 is not going to create a new Sanyaku rank. So we're just going to have the two Komosubi in the upcoming Basho. And this is the second or third consecutive Basho where there's really no controversy or thought that needed to go into the Sanyaku ranks. It's pretty formulaic with the results that we got. And this is this is how it's going to end up. Nothing to be concerned about anything for these rankings yeah i i think it's kind of funny how we've been doing this so long with the extra sekiwake slots and stuff that at this point it's old hat like mm -hmm. you know exactly what's going on you're like no nope, no there's, there's no doubt here it's just this it's this it's this we're done yeah we, we we've learned all the rules about uh creating <laughs> yeah. new sanyaku slots at this point <laughs> through attrition at this point yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely uh, so moving down to the Maigashira 1 East rank, we had Hokuto Fuji just missing out on the Komosubi rank, so he should easily slot in as the top-ranked Maigashira for Aki. There's no other Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maigashira 1, so no competition for this to take this spot from Hokuto Fuji at all. 
And as I mentioned, nobody else deserves the Maegashira 1 rank, but there is one Rikshi that deserves to be ranked at least Maegashira 2, and that is Meisei, who went 8-7 and seven for Maegashira 3 last Basho, and he is the next obvious Rikshi to be placed on the Bonske. Kind of the first decision that I really need to make on this Bonske is at Maegashira 2. Uh, the two ranks of Maegashira 2 will belong to a couple of Rikshi that deserve to be Maegashira 3. So you can already see right here, we're starting to pull people up uh, from further down the Bonske than uh, they deserve to go. And that situation is just going to get worse and worse. Uh, we've seen it like the past three or four Basho ever since Hoshoryu. Wakamoto Haru, Daisho have kind of been on a roll, and the Sanyaku ranks have been super strong and clearing out the joy. There's just not a lot of people that deserve to fill out the joy, so we're having to push people further up the Bonske uh, than they need to, and that trend is continuing uh, for this Basho. Uh, so we're going to see it get a lot worse. We're starting to see the effects already, but it's going to get a lot worse as we go down. I, I really like this visualization that you have here with the red and the green for the for the Kachikoshi and Makikoshis, mm -hmm. um, you can really see like between Maegashira one and Maegashira like 13, it's almost all red. Um, yeah. So that just, <laughs> <laughs> so having, having that many Makikoshis in the middle of the Bonske means that those guys will be under demoted. They, we won't be able to push them down as far as their records may deserve. And the green down at the bottom, those guys are all going to get yanked up higher than they otherwise would have. Absolutely. Um, which which is not super uncommon. We've dealt with weird, like, yeah, you know, wastelands of of losses in the past. And um, so, yeah, I'm I'm interested to see where this one goes. Mm -hmm. So for this ranking, the Maegashira 2 ranking in previous predictions, I, I would have easily given this to Abi. I, I don't think I mentioned the two Rikshi I'm considering for Maegashira 2 are Asanoyama and Abi. Um, and in the past, I would have easily given Abi, the east side, he was the Sanyaku Rikshi. He would have Sanyaku bias on his side. But since Isekahama Oyakata had to vacate his role at the top of the Shinpan department, who puts together the Bonds case, uh, the new Bonds case committee doesn't seem to favor the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi over the Joy Rikshi quite as much. So this scenario is very familiar to um, a scenario when we were predicting the Natsu Bonds case. So in Natsu, or in Haru, Tobizaru was a Komosubi that was dropping after a 6-9 and nine record, just like Abi. And Endo was a rising Rikshi for Maegashira 6 with a 9-6 and six record. And here we have Asanoyama, who will be rising for Maegashira 4 after an 8-7 and seven record. Both those rank record combinations would put them at the Maegashira 3 rank. Uh, I had predicted in that prediction that uh, Tobizaru would be ahead of Endo due to Sanyaku bias, but that did not turn out to be the case. If we had eliminated rank bias from the discussion of who, which one of those would be ahead of the other, Endo would deserve to be ranked ahead of Tobizaru because Endo was on the east side while Tobizaru was on the west side. Endo also fought in four matches against Sanyaku Rikshi that Basho, which is something it seems that the Bonske committee is starting to put a little bit more emphasis on than we've seen in the past is like people outside of the joy kind of sneaking in to get a few Sanyaku uh, matches under their belt. They seem to be getting a little extra push, at least certainly in the last Basho that we saw. So I'm, I'm going to start taking that into consideration as well. Cool. So okay. we take a look at Abi versus Asanoyama here. We see that Asanoyama also had four matches against Sanyaku Rikshi, which would put him on a more even footing with Abi, kind of eliminating possibly that Sanyaku bias. And if they are on a more even field, we're getting rid of that bias. Then Asanoyama was on the east side. Abi was on the west side. And so because of all of that, I'm going to put Asanoyama at Maegashira 2 east and Abi at Maegashira 2 west. Then huh. at Maegashira 3, we're going to... Uh, we're going to have to start pulling from Brixie that deserve to be ranked Maegashira 5. There's nobody else that deserves Oof. to be Maegashira 3. Actually, we just placed the Brixie that deserves to be Maegashira 3. Those were Asano Yamanabi. <laughs> yeah. uh, nobody deserves to be ranked Maegashira 4, so we got to start pulling from Maegashira 5. And in that pool is Shodai and Ura. But we can't place Ura at this rank because he went 7 and 8 from Maegashira 4. Uh, so by process of elimination, uh, uh, it looks okay. like Shodai will get a favorable drop of only one rank after a 6 and 9 record from Maegashira 2. Not too crazy yet, but yeah, okay. 
We're getting a little crazier here at Mike Ashira three West dipping our toes in the crazy pool. Yep. We've now exhausted our options for Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Mike Ashira five. So now we have to move on to the pool of Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Mike Ashira six of which there is only one. And that is Tamawashi. So there's, I can't see any other options at this point. I mean, we have Mitaki Yumi, who was ranked <laughs> above this with a losing record, but he was three and 12. He's not going to drop one. Yeah. Rank. Midori <laughs> Fuji isn't going to slide over from Migashir three East to Migashir three West after a four and 11 record. No. So I, it looks like it's Tamawashi. <laughs> And Those so, guys might have a little bit longer to wait here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a promotion of four ranks for Tamawashi, in my prediction, after an eight and seven record from my Gashira seven and four ranks for eight and seven. We've seen worse. I think I think the biggest eight and seven jump I've seen is six, maybe seven. Yeah, we've seen some we've seen some wild ones. Yeah. Yeah. So then we get to the Maigashira four rank, and we're gonna we're gonna get even more desperate here. Uh, we still can't place Ura, who deserves to be ranked Maigashira five, since he was on the west side of this rank. So we can't move him over to the east side of that rank. Right. So that means we have to jump to a pool of four Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira eight to fill the Maigashira four ranking. Uh, so of those four Rikshi that deserve to be Mike Shira eight, we can eliminate two of them immediately in Onosho and Takayasu as they both had losing records and placing them here would be a promotion, which can't do even in our most desperate hour. So that leaves us with Takanosho who went eight and seven from Mike Shira nine or Gono Yama who went 10 and five from Mike Shira 13. So typically when we are dealing with Rikshi this far down the bonds K, we look at east side versus west side. But both of these Rikshi were on the east side. So our next tiebreaker we would look at is looking at the number of wins these Rikshi had. Gonoyama had 10 compared to Takanosho's eight. So we would put Gonoyama at the Magashira for East rank. But as I mentioned before, the last Bonds K has me a little spooked with how they're treating Rikshi that fought against a uh, Sanyaku foe or two. So there were three cases in the previous Bonds K where Rikshi ended up ahead of someone they deserve to otherwise be behind. The only difference is that the Rikshi that got preferential treatment had fought against Sanyaku Rikshi. Uh, so when we compare Takanosho and Gonoyama, we see that Takanosho fought and beat Daisho on day 15, whereas the highest ranked Rikshi Gonoyama fought was Maigashira 5 Onosho. I don't know at this point if one Sanyaku match will be enough to earn Takanosho some preferential treatment. Uh, the lowest amount of Sanyaku matches fought that we saw somebody get preferential treatment with in the previous Basho was Sudugisho, who had fought against two Sanyaku Rikshi, and then he got a bump up further than we would have otherwise expected. Uh, so I'm going to roll the dice here and say that one Sanyaku match is going to be enough to break the tie in Takanosho's favor and put him at the Maigashira 4 East rank. Okay. And then we get to Maigashira 4 West. This is where we can finally stick Ura in. He had a 7 and 8 record at Maigashira 4 West. Um, he deserves to be Maigashira 5. The next closest Rikshi that deserves to be ranked is Maigashira 8. Uh, so we're not going to put anybody in front of him just for the sake of dropping Ura. He should be pretty comfortable at Maigashira 4 West. And this would be, if this is where he ends up, this would be his third straight Basho at the Maigashira 4 rank. <laughs> Did he uh, get a 7 and 8 and hold rank last time? Uh, I think he had a 7 and 8 and dropped from Maigashira uh Four east. Oh something. yeah, okay. Four east to four west, and now if your prediction is right, four west to four west. Yes, that's kind of silly. I get it though. Yep. <laughs> then at Maigashira five, the east side should go to Gonoyama pretty easily. I think he is the only real remaining option to put here. And if this is indeed where Gonoyama ends up, this would be an eight rank jump for him. Then joining Gonoyama at Maigashira 5, I think will be one of the Rikshi that he made his Makuuchi debut alongside in Nagoya, and that is Shona Noumi. So we've exhausted the pool of Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maigashira 8 at this point. Uh, and so now we have to look at the Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maigashira 9. We're looking to give a uh, four rank over promotion here. <laughs> of the two Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maigashira 9, 
Only Shona Naomi had a winning record, so he is the only choice that we can put here. Sure. But there is a little bit that's nagging at me that thinks, well, if we go with some Joy Sanyaku bias, because Joy and Sanyaku bias still clearly exists. Uh, what I was talking about before with Abi and Asanoyama was maybe Sanyaku bias not overtaking Joy Rikshi as much, but when we're talking about a Joy Rikshi versus somebody like Shona no Umi, who is very clearly not in the Joy, there's still some bias here. So part of me is thinking that um, is there a world where the Bonske committee puts Midori Fuji ahead of Shona no Umi here? Uh, I I think the possibility exists, but it's it's slight because I feel like Midori Fuji would have to drop further than two ranks after a four and eleven yeah. record from my Gashira three. Midori Fuji deserves to be only the reason why I consider this is because Midori Fuji only deserves to be one rank below Shona no Umi. And in this situation, somebody who was fully within the joy versus Shona no Umi, who was my Gashira 14. I would expect them to be ranked ahead of that Maegashira 14 Rikshi. But I, I just think Shona Naomi does deserve to be ahead of Midori Fuji, and I think that's going to allow them to push Midori Fuji just a little bit further back after such a bad record. I don't yeah. I don't think you want to drop him only two ranks after 4-11. and 11. After 4-11, and 11, that sounds pretty ridiculous. But then again, we've seen a half-rank drop after a 5-10. and 10. But yeah. when that happened... That Rikshi that dropped only a half rank was the next Rikshi that deserved to be placed in the Bonds K. And Midori Fuji is not that Rikshi in this case. Fair enough. So we'll drop down to the Maegashira 6 East ranking, and we get to a point where we can now circle back to one of the Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maegashira 8, but we couldn't place him before because they had a losing record and placing them would have given them a prom promotion. And that Rikshi is Onosho, who is ranked Maegashira 5 West and went 6 and 9. Uh, so this is the first rank where he can receive a demotion, and I think that's as far as he's going to fall. Uh, he is two ranks clear of the next eligible Rikshi that could land at this rank sure then for Maiga Shira 6 West we we cannot pull the last remaining Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maiga Shira 8 yet nor the last remaining Rikshi that deserves to be Maiga Shira 9 yet so that leaves us with a group of five Rikshi that deserve to be Maiga Shira 10 to deal with and unfortunately <laughs> for me all of those Rikshi could feasibly land at this rank. There's nobody we can eliminate out of hand that awesome. would be like promoting a Rikshi with a losing record. Um, so it is Midori Fuji, who went 4-11 and 11 for Maegashira 3, Hira Daumi, who went 5-10 and 10 for Maegashira 5, Kodoweko, who went 8-7 and 7 for Maegashira 11, Ryuden, who went 10-5 and 5 for Maegashira 15, and Haku Oho, who went 11-4 and 4 for Maegashira 17. So this is... This is where some of that people have fought against the Sanyaku Rikshi. How much bias does that give them? Does that give them, like, are they on the same footing as a Joy Rikshi? Does one match fought against the Sanyaku Rikshi give you bias ahead of all other Rikshi? Uh, I, I'm i not sure, but all of these Rikshi I discussed fought at least one Sanyaku match, except for Kodoeko. So for me, this this Bonske at least, that's going to put Kodoeko at the bottom of my priority list. Um, but for the rest of their rankings, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, does Ryuden's one Sanyaku match fought put him at the same level as Midori Fuji, who fought a full joy schedule? In my mind, I, I still can't imagine that a Maegashir 15 who happened to fought, fight one Sanyaku is going to receive is like, oh yeah, you're basically the equivalent of a joy Rikshi. I, <laughs> I have to imagine that the joy bias still exists. Uh, so because of that, I am going to be putting Midori Fuji here at the Maegashira 6 West rank just because he does he was ranked so far above everybody else uh, that he was competing against. Or in the case of like Hiro Duumi, who was only ranked two ranks ahead of, he fought a full joy schedule. Hiro Duumi did not, uh, and I think that will just give him a little bit more bias. Then we get to Maegashira 7 East, and mercifully, uh, much like Ura, here we have Takeyasu swooping in uh, with his <laughs> angel wings and his 7-8 and eight record. Oh, uh, no, that's just back hair. <laughs> 
He is the Rikshi that deserves to be ranked the highest of everyone remaining. So we're going to have him hold on to his rank. Uh, and he was the last remaining Rikshi that deserved to be ranked my Gashira eight. So we've cleared We finally cleared out that pool of four Rikshi that deserved to be my Gashira eight that I think we started mining when we were at like my Gashira three or four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so my Gashira seven West, this is, this is my big one for this bonds. K. Uh, this is where it just kind of becomes a free for all. So this is where the outline stretches into one page per rank. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's, there's always at least one of those, isn't there? <laughs> the, these past few bonds K's. Yes. So, I, I don't really, uh, just for the record, I follow along on the outline, of course. So I know where we're at. But mostly I just like read the headline and then skim like, how long am I expecting this one to be? <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll, I'll raise the points as they come up, but I don't want to spoil the whole thing other than I see, oh, this is a this one's a doozy. <laughs> this is the long one. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> All right. Go so ahead. there is an easy chalk pick that we could go with here, and that would be Oho. He deserves to be the highest ranked of any remaining Rikshi. Uh, he deserves to be ranked Maegashira 9. Uh, but he did not fight any Sanyaku Rikshi in his schedule. So if not Oho, then we would need to look at that pool of Rikshi at Maegashira 10, and I'm only going to consider the ones that fought against Sanyaku Rikshi. So that'd just be eliminating Kotoeko from that group of five that I had mentioned before. Do any of them have a realistic chance of overtaking Oho? I think so. And then if we look down at the Maegashira 11, or Rikshi that deserved to be ranked Maegashira 11, we do have Mitake Yumi, who is the last Rikshi to oh, have yeah. fought a full Sanyaku schedule that we have not yet placed on our prediction. And he was so, three and twelve from two. So yes. this would still this would still be an under demotion, but like not by a lot. Yeah. And context, Midori Fuji dropping from Maigashira three to Maigashira six. It's only a three rank drop for a four and eleven record. Mitaki Yumi did that exact same thing a couple of Basho ago. He had a 4-11 record from Maegashira 3, and he dropped down to Maegashira 6. I don't think <laughs> I'm talking out of my ass when I say that. Uh, <laughs> let me double check here. Real you better quick. prove it, otherwise everyone will know you're a fraud. He was Maegashira 3 East in Haru of this year. He went 4-11. and 11. He re- ended up at Maegashira 6 West. The exact thing that I have happening to Midori Fuji in this Bonds K. God, it is just painful every time we look back on such recent history and like it feels like five seconds ago I, he was an ozeki and I nope, know. it's <laughs> it was such a flash in the pan that it's already been almost a year <laughs> yeah uh so let me try to walk you through the logic that i use to come up with my answer for who i have going at my gashira seven west because i feel like we truly have like six contenders for <laughs> this rank <laughs> all right go so ahead. i i need to figure out if there's anybody that I could just eliminate outright from this group of six Rikshi. And I think the first one I, I want to eliminate is Ryuden um, because typically Haku Oho would be the one that's eliminated first from like this group of four Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Mike Ashir 10. Cause he was the only one that was on the West side of the rank and typically East side gives preferential treatment over any West side Rikshi. But Haku Oho also fought two Sanyaku matches, and I think his involvement in the Yusho race up until the final day could give him a bit of preferential treatment as well. Uh, so for me, that kind of bumps Haku Oho ahead of Ryuden in the uh, preferential treatment status as Ryuden only fought one uh, Sanyaku match, and it really had no bearing on the Yusho race. Um, but that is where Haku Oho's kind of eligibility for this rank stops for me. I think the fact that he was Maegashira 17 and mostly fought against the bottom of the bonds K is going to hurt his chances when the other Rikshi that we're considering for this rank were ranked Maegashira 2, Maegashira 5, and Maegashira 6. Okay. So fair. next up, I'm going to eliminate Oho, who is the one who deserves to be ranked the highest out of this group of Rikshi. Um, because he didn't fight any Sanyaku matches compared to three for Hira to Umi and six for Mitaki Yumi. So let's just take a look at what happened in the last Bonds K prediction. We saw Nishiki Fuji went three and 12 from Maegashira three, and he deserved to be ranked Maegashira 12 in this upcoming, in this 
uh, Nagoya Basho that we just had. Uh, he ended up going ahead of Hokuto Fuji, who went six and nine for Maegashira seven and deserved to be Maegashira 10. So he jumped ahead of Hokuto Fuji, who does des- he deserved to be two ranks behind. Uh, Hokuto Fuji did not fight any Sanyaku Rikshi. He also went ahead of Takanosho, who went seven and eight from Maegashira eight and deserved to be Maegashira nine. So we went ahead of Takanosho, who he deserved to be three ranks behind. Once again, Takanosho did not fight any Sanyaku Rikshi. Mm-hmm. So in my head, Mitaki Yumi is very much filling that same role that Nishiki Fuji filled in the previous Basho. And we're seeing him coming up against Oho, who he deserved to be ranked two ranks behind in this Bonske. But as he was in the joy, fought a full Sanyaku schedule, I think that could be enough for him to overcome the two rank difference between uh, himself and Oho. Sure. Then that leaves me with Hira Duumi versus Mitake Yumi. Uh, so pluses for Mitake Yumi is he fought a full joy schedule. But Hira Duumi wasn't too far off from that. He was only two ranks below, uh, three ranks below Mitake Yumi, but he fought three Sanyaku matches. Uh, and he deserves to be one rank ahead of Mitake Yumi. Uh, Hira Duumi was also on the east side while Mitake Yumi was on the west side. I don't know if that's a factor at all, but it can't hurt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <okay>, so fair. <laughs> because Hira Duumi deserves to be one rank ahead of Mitake Yumi, and because he did have a handful of Sanyaku matches, I am going to put Hira Duumi at Maegashira 7 West, falling two ranks from Maegashira 5 after his 5 and 10 record. All and right. then the Maegashira 8 and 9 ranks are basically just going to follow my process of elimination that I use. We're just uh, going to bang, bang, bang like the rest of the guys that you mentioned. Yeah, just go in reverse order. So at Maegashira 8 East, I have Mitake Yumi dropping 6 ranks after his 3 and 12 record from Maegashira 2. Sure. At Maegashira 8 West, I have Oho dropping 2 ranks after his 6 and 9 record from Maegashira 6. At Maegashira 9 East, I have Haku Oho rising 8 ranks after his 11 and 4 record from Maegashira 17. And at Maegashira 9 West, I have Ryuden rising 6 ranks after his 10 and 5 record from Maegashira 15. All right. So that's that. That was clears, a nice run. <laughs> yeah. And that clears the biggest hurdle on this Bonske. Things slowly get better and better as we go. Um, I think that that's easily the hardest spot sure. <laughs> on this boss game. There's, there's not some places we don't have to think, uh, but we don't have to think that hard anymore. Oh, so, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> at Maegashira 10 on the east side, the easy answer for this rank would be Koto Waco. He is the Rikshi that deserves to be ranked the highest among the remaining Rikshi. He deserves to be ranked Maegashira 10. I think any other Rikshi that we're considering at this point would deserve to be ranked. Uh, Maegashira 11 would be the next one. Uh, and that is that is what I'm going to end up doing. We're going to have Koto Waco at Maegashira 10 east. But I do think there is possibility of one other Rikshi taking that spot. And that Rikshi would be Endo, who I'm putting at Maegashira 10 West. Uh, so Endo deserves to be ranked one rank lower than Kota Waco, but Endo, did, he did have that pesky one match fought against a Sanyaku Rikshi, while Kota Waco did not. Both were double digit Maegashira, so neither would have any other kind of schedule advantage over the other. But the reason I'm not going with Endo over Kota Waco is twofold. One, Still not convinced that one Sanyaku match fought is going to give you preference over a Rikshi <laughs> okay. that didn't fight any and deserves to be ranked higher than you. And two, we, we've talked a bunch about these Rikshi who deserve to be uh, ranked lower than some people in the previous Bonsuke, but they got pushed ahead. And the only thing we can point to is, well, he fought against some Sanyaku Rikshi. So in those case, in those cases, when we look at that past Bonsuke, those Rikshi that got pushed past other Rikshi, only got pushed past uh, people that they deserve to be one half rank behind. So Tsurugisho was on the west side of the Bonske, and he ended up ahead of Rikshi that deserved to be the same numerical rank of him, uh, but were previously on the east side. Uh, so he just overtook them by one half rank difference. Keen Bozon was on the east side of the Bonske, and he ended up ahead of Rikshi that deserved to be one numerical rank higher than him, but 
they deserve to be like he if he deserved to be like Mike Gashir 10, they deserve to be Mike Gashir 9. He deserved to be on the east side, they deserve to be on the west side. So really still just a half rank difference between those I two. Gotcha. If, if so, it's a if it is a factor, it's a pretty small one, is what you're saying. Right. Yeah. And so in this case, between Kotoeko and Endo, they were both on the east side this past Bonske, making Endo one full rank behind Kota Waco, which even if his one Sanyaku match fought gave him an extra half rank boost would still not be enough to overtake Kota Waco here. Okay. I see. So yeah, the, the, so far the, what we've seen for the Sanyaku rule, which if it even extends out into this next Bonske, who's to say that they follow that the same logic again. Um, so far what we've seen, it only makes up for a half rank difference. I gotcha. Yeah, that's that's tough because like that's going to be something that you you just like there's all these things that are such tiny differences or things that we believe to be these tiny tiebreakers. Mm -hmm. And then they just put a new guy in charge of it. Yeah. So like, (laughs) yeah. How how long ago was that? Because it's still not it's still pretty recent. I think their first one was March. Uh, okay. Whichever Bonske that Hoku Seho debuted on, because yeah, March, because that was the one where they treated Jurio Rikshi like people. Oh yeah, that's if right. If you remember that, and then I think they got their hand slapped, and then they they've stopped doing that. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> we're mean to them. Yeah, <laughs> get <exactly>. the memo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was it was just March. So this is only going to be their fourth Bonske that they've made. Yeah. yeah. So like, even if even if there are new rules, we're still dialing them in. We're still, yeah, we're still trying to figure out what it is. Like I said, up above, uh, when we were talking about the Maegashira 2 rank, when Isekahama was the head of it, it really seemed like Sanyaku bias was a clear tier above Joy bias. Yeah, yeah. And what we've been seeing these past few bonds, K, is Sanyaku and Joy bias really are kind of on the same level or same ish level right now, which makes sense to me because if you're in the Sanyaku ranks, you're fighting the same people that are in the. <laughs> yeah. That the joy people are fighting. So yeah, it doesn't make too big of a difference. If you're Magashira roughly four or above, you'll face all the same guys as this as the Yokozuna would, just in a different order and depends on your performance. Yeah. Like exactly. Theoretically. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Let's keep on moving down because we should be able to take care of the rest of these final six ranks in much quicker order. As as I mentioned before, this this section of the Bonske plays out a lot nicer than the middle section. So at Maegashira 11, we have three remaining Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maegashira 11. What a concept. What? Uh, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> one of those Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maegashira 11 is uh, Jurio Rikshi Atami Fuji. So it is too soon to consider ranking him. <laughs> this so, is, he deserves to be here. So he is eliminated from consideration. Absolutely. <laughs> Without a second thought in my mind. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it comes down to Hokuseiho versus Keen Bozon. Neither of them fought a Sanyaku Rikshi. I think we're past everybody who has fought a Sanyaku Rikshi. Sure, sure. Uh, and both were previously on the east side, so we don't have east versus west side to figure out who to place. But Kim Bozan had more wins than Hoku Seho, so he should be Maegashira 11 east after his 7-8 and eight record from Maegashira 10, and Hoku Seho Maegashira 11 west after his 5-10 and 10 record from Maegashira 6. Then at Maegashira 12, Takura Fuji is the only Rikshi that deserves to be ranked Maegashira 12, making him a slam dunk to be the Maegashira 12 East Rikshi. Which may surprise you that instead we chose... Takura Fuji. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. The the last time that you... <laughs> it was... Uh... Oh, Kota Waco. You were, yeah, you were like, the It'd easy answer would be Kota Waco. Yeah. So that's who we picked. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. So we were on 12 West. Yes. Uh... So Mike Shear 12 West is really the first place we might be able to start thinking about placing a Tommy Fuji. He deserves to be two ranks higher than any remaining Rikshi, which is kind of our typical rule of when we want to start placing a Jurio Rikshi. But there's a rule just slightly older than that one that we followed, which is uh, you don't place any Jurio Rikshi until you've placed all Makuuchi Rikshi that have had that had a winning record. Now, there is a caveat to that where, like, if you have somebody who's ranked Jurio 1 that had, like, 10 wins and somebody ranked Maegashira 17 who had, like, 8 wins, we've seen them jump that Rikshi. Um, but I haven't seen them really jump a, a 9 and 6. It's too... I, 
I'm starting to second guess this. I might want him to jump ahead of Awayama here, uh, but I've already submitted my guess to Bonds K ranks, uh, so I can't. Uh, <laughs> All right. So then stick to that, at least for now. <laughs> yep. Just know that I'm now waffling on this all of a sudden. Ah, yes, um, of course. But let it be known. <laughs> our 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 old rule is that you don't place a Juri Rikshi until you've placed every Makauchi Rikshi with a winning record, which we haven't done yet, and we're not going to be placing the final Makauchi Rikshi, Rikshi with a winning record quite yet, because uh, we have three Rikshi that are falling down the rankings that deserve to be ranked Magashira 13 that we need to consider for the Magashira 12 West rank. Uh, Sada Naomi and Nishiki Fuji both went 5-10 and 10 at Magashira 8, and Mio Giryu, who went 6-9 and nine at Magashira 10. Uh, Sada Naomi was the only one of these three who was on the east side, so I will have him take the Magashira 12 West rank. Then at Magashira 13, once again, we're dealing with two Rikshi who deserve to be ranked Magashira 13, and there isn't like a third or fourth one in there that we need to consider. It's really nice. Um, so in the past... We had Sada Naomi and Nishiki Fuji had the same record at the same rank. Old Ryan would have said, let's let's put keep them together. They need to stay next to each other on the Bonds K. And while that is a distinct possibility here, that is not what I am going to do. But because old Ryan, would, he was young and foolish. He was, so he didn't have the well-thought-out tiebreaker rules that he has <laughs> now. And if we placed Nishiki Fuji at Maigashira 13 East next to Sada Naomi, that would violate our tiebreaker rules because Nishiki Fuji and Miyugiryu, they were both on the west side, no tiebreaker there. Miyogiryu had more wins with his six compared to Nishiki Fuji's five. So he should be ahead of Nishiki Fuji on the next Bonds K. That means I have Miyogiryu breaking up that Maigashira eight pair of Sada Naomi and Nishiki Fuji to land at Maigashira 13 East and Nishiki Fuji landing at Maigashira 13 West. Then at Maigashira 14 on the East side, it comes down to once again, two Rikshi that deserve to be Maigashira 14. See how nice this can be? How easy <laughs> this can be? It comes down to Aoyama versus Koto Shoho. Aoyama was on the east side. Koto Shoho was on the west side. So Aoyama should end up at Maigashira 14 East after a 9-6 and six record from Maigashira 17. Yeah, looking at you, Maigashira 7. Come on now. <laughs> this is, you could have been You could have been something. But no, you had to be trouble. It's really not that hard, people. <laughs> So with Aoyama being placed, we have now placed our last Makauchi Rikshi with a winning, winning record on the Bonds K. So we should be free and clear to place a Tommy Fuji in the rankings. But I, I just don't think that's going to be the case quite yet, because if there's there's always one more hurdle for the Jurio Rikshi to get past before they can be placed in Makauchi. And this time. The hurdle is if we place a Tommy Fuji at the Magashira 14 West rank, that would mean Koto Shoho would have to be ranked Magashira 15, which would be an over demotion for him after a seven and eight record for Magashira 13, which is fine. A Rikshi can get over demoted if there's not enough room for them, but Makauchi Rikshi don't get over demoted in favor of a Jurio Rikshi. You just need. <laughs> You just need to look at Asanoyama and Ichi Nojo when they went 13 and 2 and 14 and 1 from Jurio 1 and 2. And they only ended up at Magashira 13 and 14 because if you place them any higher than that, some Makauchi Rikshi would have been over demoted, which is actually now making me feel better about not placing Atami Fuji higher. Uh, because if we had Atami Fuji any higher than this, no matter what order, Koto Shoho would end up at Magashira 15. So that I'm feeling a little bit better about. <laughs> having Aoyama ahead of Atami Fuji here. Gotcha. So like, Koto still could Shoho. Be incredibly wrong, but I am going to put Koto Shoho at Magashira 14 West in order to avoid over demoting him in favor of a lowly scum Jurio Rikshi. <laughs> yeah. you, you can't you can't place the dregs above somebody of yeah. the likes of Koto Shoho. Speaking of the dregs, at Magashira 15 East, all roadblocks should be cleared, all hurdles should be jumped, and Atami Fuji will be returning to the top division after his 11-4 Yusho from the Jurio 1 rank. And then at Magashira 15, Chiyo Shoma is the only Makauchi Rikshi that deserves this rank. Kageyaki from Jurio also deserves to be Magashira 15, but once again, scum of the earth beyond being a Jurio Rikshi for Kageyaki. But... Um, <laughs> So he's he's not going to take the Magashir 15 right West out. rank. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's not going to take that rank um, 
instead of Chiyoshoma for multiple reasons. So Chiyoshoma should drop from Magashir 12 to Magashir 15 West after his 6-9 and nine record. We only got three more Rikshi to play. See how easy this has gotten? This this feels so much nicer. We could have been <laughs> out of here like 30 minutes ago if it was all like this. Could have been. But no, we were denied that uh, that boon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> here we sit. <laughs> now go on. I'm, I'm having a good time. <laughs> I I think it's funny how the, like, especially when I'm editing our Bonske episodes, I listen back and it's like, man, it does not sound like I want to be there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it you know what it feels that way on this side of the conversation too. At <laughs> least it's consistent then. Yeah, yes. good. <laughs> you're not you're not getting any wrong feelings from that. That is <laughs> no good. I'm glad that's accurate. accurate. Yep. Uh, <laughs> at Magashira 16 East, there's only one Rikshi that deserves to be Magashira 16, and that is Sudugisho, who went five and ten for Magashira 11. We're not going to put Kageyaki in front of Sudugisho, despite him deserving to be one rank ahead of Sudugisho, because once again, our rule for Juria Rikshi got to be two ranks ahead or deserve to be two ranks ahead to be placed ahead of a Makuuchi Rikshi. Uh, but speaking of Kageyaki, he is the next Rikshi that I am going to be placing. He is now two ranks clear from any other Makuuchi Rikshi that we could place. So he should have no issue being ranked at Magashira 16 West after his nine and six record from Jurio one. And then at Magashira 17, the final rank is pretty easy here too. Uh, and we are only going to have a Magashira 17 East this Basho. In the previous Basho, we had a Magashira 17 East and West. Uh, we have added one Rikshi to the Sanyaku ranks uh, where we previously had eight Rikshi. We now have nine. And so, we just got to take that rank from the bottom of the bonds cake, put it up in the sun, Yaku. So Magashira 17 East, the last rank in my predicted bonds case, something wild and crazy could happen. It won't, but it could. Um, like so what? I, I don't oh, know. I suppose like an extra Komosubi or Sekiwake. Or like, they're like, now nah, we've been promoting too many uh, Komosubi with 11 and four records. Let's not promote. Let's Kodo just Waka. break uh, uh, thousands of years of tradition. Yeah. Yeah. It would be something like that to prevent it from going down to, uh, from stopping at Magashira yeah. 17. The, uh, the tension's killing me though. There's one black box <laughs> left on our on our thing here. So who is it? Uh, so there is only one Makuuchi Rikshi that deserves the Magashira 17 rank, and he will take that very easily over the two Jurio Rikshi that deserve to be ranked mm-hmm. Magashira 17, and that is Dai Shoho, who will be dropping uh, after a six and nine record for Magashira 14. So. Dai Shoho was placed in a loser goes to Jurio match against uh, Jurio 2 Rikshi Roga on day 15. If Roga would have won that match, he would have had a 9 and 6 record from Jurio 2, while Dai Shoho would have had a 5 and 10 record from Magashira 14. Easily would have put Roga into the Makuuchi division at the expense of Dai Shoho, but Dai Shoho won that match and secured himself the final ranking in Makuuchi. I love when they have those line up just perfectly like that. Yeah, it. It was really easy, this Basho, for the promotions and demotions. So very clear cut, this Basho. Wakataka Kage, obviously absent from the Basho for Magashira 12. He's going to be dropping down into Jurio. And then we also had Bu Shozan, who is still looking to stay in the top division for more than one Basho at a time. He had a 3-12 and 12 record from Jurio 16. Those were the only two Rikshi that had demotable records in the top division. And then looking at Rikshi that had promotable records. Once again, there were only two Kagiaki with his nine and six at Juria one and Atami Fuji with his 11 and four at Juria one. Technically Thomas Shoho and Kito Nowaka both had 10 and five records from Juria five and had promotable records up to the bottom Makauchi rank of Maigashira 17. But if you want to force your way into Makauchi at somebody else's expense, you got to do better than a barely yeah. promotable record. So if, really not considering Thomas Shoho or Kito Nowaka at all. Right. If there were like four or five more guys that had terrible records at the bottom of Makuchi, maybe that would have changed things. But like, yeah, if there's nobody, nobody forcing the issue up and nobody forcing the issue down. So we just got the two exchanges. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no drama, that no Sanyaku drama, no Jurio drama. Uh, maybe I got the placement of Atami Fuji and Kakayaki wrong, but we know yeah. uh, what order they're going to come up into the top division. And we know they're the only two coming up to the top division. Uh, so, Jake, what do you think is the most likely thing that I got wrong on this Bonske? 
I know that we have a really good patron question, so I'm not going to take any extra time here on this one, except for to say that having five guys tied for that same rank, uh, what was that? Seven West. Seven West. Yeah. Uh, I'm very interested to see how that shakes out, and maybe we can get some more uh, insight on the tiebreaker rules. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I'm the Magashira kind of seven West through nine. That's what I'm most interested to see. Yeah how that shakes out, what order all of that plays out in. Because I think everything else that I've placed, it's not going to be exactly right. But I, this Bonds K, I don't think we're going to have a situation like we had with the last Bonds K. I don't feel like there's anybody with as variable rankings as we had with the last one where I missed multiple, I missed somebody by three full numerical ranks, somebody yeah. else by two and a half ranks. That's not going to happen on this one. I'm fairly no. confident that is not happening on this one. The I think the I'm, only one that you could even have theoretically get that far off is a Tommy Fuji being three ranks lower than where he should be. But yeah, we know that it's Jurio, a Jurio guy. So we know he's going to get mistreated a little, at least a little. Right. So, yeah. yep. Okay. Anyways, though. Yes, so we've had a uh, Patreon question that we've just been, one, waiting to uh, make sure we had enough time to get a proper answer to, and then we yeah. wanted to throw it on the Bonds K episode because it's it's fitting. Uh, so question from our patron, King of the Toads. He says, hello, JSA West. Very appreciate the- Good start. <laughs> yep, very, very good feeding our egos as we are officially JSA West. We should get a T-shirt that says JSA. West. Oh, we got it. Yeah, we got Redbubble T-shirt design options we can put up there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll workshop it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he says, I hope this is the correct place to ask a question uh, that I humbly request is answered on the podcast, if you please. Once again, just love how he's asking this question. He is a king. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you would expect a bit more <laughs> pompousness, not like, please answer my question. It would be very nice of you to do so if. King of the Toads, you'd expect, like, answer my question, you peasants. Well, King, but King of Toads, well, which are very small. Yeah. Uh, but his question, how is the Makushta Bonske <laughs> formed? I.e., is it consistent or kind of a whatever free-for-all? What broad patterns occur in terms of numbers? Uh, is there such thing as a Makushta Joy? What is the JSA West's opinion on the system? Well, I obviously – I. I I would consider myself an expert on Makauchi Bonske movement. Beyond that, I really have never paid attention to. So I, I needed to outside source this, and I went to uh, our our Bonske sensei, and that is Leonard of the Tachiai blog. Uh, he is somebody that uh, very thoroughly goes through and sees like who's going to be moving from Makushta up to Jurio. How's the top of Makushta going to be formed? So he is the perfect person to ask this and uh, answer that he gave us uh, as far as like a Makushta joy. He said, there's definitely a joy that um, you can kind of understand reasonably well. There's a fairly clear numerical system to the movements outside of the Makushta joy. Um, and then he mentions that there are people on Sumo Forum that understand it in great detail. Uh, and so we will move to a Sumo Forum post that Leonard posted on our behalf about the Makushta. Uh, but first, he he defined the Makushta Joy a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, Makushta 1 through Makushta 5 is special, as you can pretty much only get promoted to Jurio from here unless you go 7-0. and 0. They mostly fight against each other and frequently visit Jurio. Makushta 6 and Makushta 15 is the area from which you can get promoted with a 7-0, and 0, so sort of an extended Joy. But that Makushta 1 through Makushta 5, that's really the real promotion range, it sounds like, for Makushta. And those guys are going to be fighting each other uh, for the most part. Sure. And so we'll go over to the uh, Sumo Forum post that Leonard was kind enough to uh, put up there. Uh, and I'm sorry I don't have this really spelled out, so I'm just going to kind of be mining through this. Well, well I mean, it, it, yeah, while you're working on that, I mean, it, it sounds like the gist is the same. Like you move up further for a better record, uh, obviously. Um, but yeah, there's there's definitely a lot more volatility to it. Like you'll, mm -hmm. I I know like if you look back and you see like these ultra phenoms that like go undefeated for a long time or whatever, guys like Hakuho or I'm pretty sure Akebono was another guy who just rocketed straight up the ranks. 
they'll spend at least a couple Basho in Makushta. Like it's kind of a transition point between the bottom three divisions you can get through in one Basho if you go undefeated. But Makushta, I think it's impossible to do so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what we got from the Sumo Forum post about this is there was somebody who went through and found, like, the average drop for, like, every single lower division rank based on your record. So they have a table Whoa. on if you're a Makushta 1 with uh, zero wins, this is how far you'll drop. Makushta 2 with five wins, this is how far you'll rise. Okay. And so what you see consistently is that the lower ranked you are, the more volatile your movement up and down the bonds K is going to be. So it looks like if you're in Makushta, uh, Makushta one through, okay. The entirety of Makushta, if you go zero and seven, you're dropping 35 ranks. That seems like that's fairly consistent. Sure. Um, and then if you go one and six, like at Makushta 1, you'll drop like 18 ranks. Then you go down to like Makushta 10, you're going to be dropping around 20 to 22 ranks. Then you go further down Makushta 30, you're going to be dropping closer to like 25, 26 ranks. And then all the way down at the bottom of Makushta, if you go 1 and 6, you're going to be dropping between 30 to 35 ranks. So the lower ranked you are, the more volatile that movement's going to be. And then it works uh, the same way going reverse. If you say you go 6 and 1, Makushta 60 you're going to be rising about 30 to 32 ranks uh if you're makushta 20 and you go six and one you're only going to be rising about 13 14 ranks uh once again there's not as much room for you to go up obviously when you're that high up in makushta um but yeah th that's kind of how it works uh you can go to sumoforum.net uh there's a post called lower division bonds k movements uh, in their Ozumo discussions folder if you want to take a look at everything else. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it was very interesting. It's like very clear cut if you have an O and whatever record. So in Sandanme, O and 7 record, you're dropping 50 ranks. Uh, and then in Jonidon and Jonokuchi, or just Jonidon, Jonidon uh, because Jonokuchi is highly variable in how many Rikshi are in that division. Yeah. But uh, Joni Don, 0 and 7, you're dropping 60 ranks. And, and just for record, that it sounds like if you're 0 and 7 in those divisions, it's like half the div half the division you're going down. Um, roughly. Uh, yeah, there's roughly. There's a little bit of volatility in the lowest two divisions, but uh, Makushta is always 60 ranks. Uh, below that, Sandanme is always 100 ranks. Um, so yeah, when you say 35 ranks or something as a drop, you're going a little bit more than halfway through that through that group. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, that does make sense as you get closer to the top that it, there's less room to move. So it has to be a little bit less volatile. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's the information that we got for how kind of Makushta joy works movement in the Makushta division. It does sound like it is kind of as fairly strict rules wise, uh, as what we're doing in the top division and predicting that, uh, it's just a different set of rules, obviously for a much larger division, but it sounds like, and I expect it to be that way. They, they, they're going to have a system for what they're doing everywhere on the bonds K. It's not like yeah. they're just going to, ah, who cares about these lower ranked guys? We'll just fling them wherever. Who cares? Yeah. I wonder if it's similar to similar to how you do like your very beginning of figuring out the Makuuchi bonds K is like, all right, this guy had this record. So he deserves to go down chunk, 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 chunk. This guy deserves to go up the, da, 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 uh, and then you work out the specifics from there. But like, yeah, if yeah. there's, if there's a rough rule of thumb for this record means you go up or down this far, and then they just put you in the pile that deserves to be Makushta eight through 10 or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. then they just sort them out through there. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever really talked about on the podcast, uh, like my process for building a bonds cave. We've but talked I, a couple of times briefly. Yeah. But yeah, I basically do like three drafts. Um, so initially I'll just go by, uh, I'll put together like who deserves to be where by the numbers. And then I'll just do a quick one where I put everybody roughly where they should go. Not thinking too hard, doing any research about tie breaking scenarios, just kind of my gut feeling. Uh, then I'll uh, go real quick though. When you say by the numbers, um, when you see a guy that goes nine and six by the numbers, you want to make him go up three ranks, yes. right? 
Yep. So like you just subtract them. So a five and 10 record means you deserve to go down five ranks. Right. And and that's when I'm saying like group of fixtures that deserve to be ranked Mike Gashir 11. That's just their right. rank and record combination where the math says they go. And that's, just a starting point. Yeah. And that's been very, very, very consistent in figuring out the rough order of these <laughs> yeah. Uh Very much so to say like that's that's how it's done. Um but yeah, and then I'll go through kind of with more with a fine tooth comb. I'm not like writing anything down yet, uh, but I'll I'll and then I'll adjusting a few things as I'm like doing research. Like how have these, how far have these guys dropped down in the past? Like uh, this person out of the joy versus this person in the joy. This rank record combination. I mean, this guy deserves to be one rank ahead of him, but just doing a lot more research. Then I might change a few more things, and then I'll go through and write the outline slash script for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Um, because I mean, there's just so many different things that go into uh, why I choose where somebody goes. I just need to write it all out. Cause I'm not going to remember to uh, convey it on this episode. If I don't otherwise. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and that's like a three hour process of going through the ranks and then really having to think, why am I putting this person here? And then it'll get me, doing some more critical thinking, having to spell out my thought process and then changing a couple other things. So it, it's usually about six, seven hour process for me putting together my Bonds K prediction. And I know uh, on Twitter, uh, our, our friend Tim Sumo uh, posted something recently, said he submitted his guest, the Bonds K. He considered putting more time into it now that he's in the top four, but 20 minutes of gut feel selections got me here and I'll do it again this time. And I, <laughs> and I said like, wow, geez, I just completed my second draft of the rankings and now I have to spend two to three ri- hours writing my explanations for my rankings, which will inevi- inevitably result in a third draft. And he's like, yeah, there's no way I'm going to do that. Cause also it's going to result in me changing 10 things, five of which will be right and five of which will be wrong, which is probably right, but do you, uh, do you I, keep track of your gut feel bones? K, I'd love to see if you do any better with that one. <laughs> I should, I might go show by Yama two on the guess the bones K game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just my, my second draft before I like go through the critical thinking and all that and like write everything out versus that final one. Yeah. That'd be interesting to see how many things I, I, which I one move is off more, incorrectly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh man. All right. Well, why don't we wrap up here? Yeah, uh, this was this was a long one, but I think that was a lot of fun, though. Yeah, I always enjoyed. It. Despite this, despite this my is fun words and actions, I live off of this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the this episode is going to be released just about a week prior to the release of the Bonds K, which will be on August twenty eighth for the Boss Show that is starting on September tenth. Uh, Jake, do we have any amateur sumo content that's going to be coming out before our uh, Bonds K review and then our main Aki Basho. Uh, yeah, episodes. by this point, I'm not really sure exactly which order things are going to come out, um, but I've got a couple chats uh, regarding our um, June and August tournaments that have happened already. Okay. Um, so yeah, there'll be some stuff. Keep an eye out. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that we're planning on any other bonus episodes before the Bonds K and the main Aki episodes. Uh, yeah. Not Between this time. travel and children and it being summer, it's just been generally busy. I'm sure yep. everybody understands. Yep. So if you enjoyed this podcast, you can leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service. You can like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you mean X? No, I do not. <laughs> I no, have absolutely never. I'm. Do you, I'm, do you oh know what I need to type in? Uh, how do my... you find that? How do you are, are you supposed to Google a thing that's like one letter? You Google Twitter. That's what you Google, <laughs> and it gets you exactly what it you want. You... <laughs> so I'm I'm still calling it Twitter because if I type in x.com, oh shit, that does bring me to Twitter. I didn't think they would be able to do that. All right, I, I retract that, that statement, but I'm still gonna pig headedly pig headedly call it Twitter. It's um, like it's not pig headed. I I think. I think I think somebody else is the one being pig headed here. <laughs> yeah. But it's like naming your band the band and being like, all right, look us up. Yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Grand Sumo Breakdown. Uh, we have a blog, grandsumobreakdown.wordpress.org. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, feel free to send us an email at grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com. Uh, we have a Patreon if you wish to support us. Uh, we have two different tiers at this point in time, a $1 and a $3 tier. $1 uh, gives you a compliment each and every Basho, uh, plus when we do our sumo trading card episodes, you will have the right to request uh, one of the doubles that we received at no extra charge. $3 level, uh, you get to ask any question of us, and we are forced to answer, much like King of the Toads did uh, this episode with the Makushta stuff. And then, Jake, I believe we are going to be starting to have uh, printed copies of the sumo newsletter that are going to be $10 a pop, I believe. Yes. Reach out to us if you are interested in the American Sumo newsletter. Um, I'll August talk about it more elsewhere. This isn't necessarily the, the... By the time this is released, I'll have already mailed out the first printings. Um, but okay. That's right. We'll I forgot we're recording this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, and this isn't the place to go into depth on that one, but um, but yeah, that's out there. I'm, I'll be mentioning it all the time. I'm super proud of the work that we put into it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty freaking awesome, and uh, people are taking more pictures these days, so it's looking better and better and better. Awesome. And uh, also, I also have to take it back. I Googled the band. They came up immediately. Very <laughs> easy to search for. <laughs> well, the internet, the internet is just, just so far beyond what we can expect of it these yeah, days. Yeah. We, it's, we should stop underestimating it. <laughs> it's the people who run the major internet sites that are the problem, not the internet knowing what we're asking it to do. <laughs> and one final plug if you would like to leave us a voicemail, you can at 805 613 seven eight six six that's eight oh five six one three sumo uh, thank you everybody for listening bye <laughs> thank you for listening to grand sumo breakdown until next time throw your salt high and keep moving forward